So let's talk about Fukuda, who is a filmmaker about whom very little is known in the West. You interviewed him for your book, Monsters Are Attacking Tokyo. And uh, what was he like? It's, it's very interesting. When I first wrote to Mr. Fukuda and asked him for an interview, he replied, and, I, and I'm more or less quoting here, I think my movies are, are all terrible, but if you really want to talk about them with me, well, I guess I would be happy to talk about them. So, you know, it wasn't false modesty. He really thought the vast majority of his films were terrible. And while Megalon could hardly be considered a, a high watermark, I, I've always felt he was a, a vastly underrated director. Uh, one thing I always say is that in terms of the strictly the live action first unit stuff from Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, it's, it's like the one Godzilla movie that you could take Godzilla out of it and you'd still have a really good movie. When I first interviewed him, though, uh, we actually got into almost a kind of argument uh, with him telling me uh, how terrible his movies were and me has trying to insist, no, no, they're actually really good. You know, I really like them. Uh, so it was kind of a strange situation. Fukuda, you know, was also very different from Ishiro Honda in the sense that both of them started out making all different kinds of movies, but H Honda got to be pigeonholed into making virtually nothing but special effects films from about 1960 onward. But Jun Fukuda, his case was, was different. He made all kinds of movies for his entire career. As I mentioned earlier, he made really good crime films like The Merciless Trap, Witness Killed, The Weed of Crime, White Rose of Hong Kong, uh, as well as some, some good uh, spy pictures and war movies. Uh, to me, there's, there's a kind of cinematic injustice in the case of Jun Fukuda uh, because he was making the same kinds of movies and at the same time and at the same level as directors at other studios like Seijun Suzuki and Kinji Fukasaku, who of course are, are now positively lionized by Sinest today. But because the only Fukuda movies that were exported into the West have been his handful of sci-fi monster pictures, He's been, I think, rather unjustly ignored. By the end of my interview with him, he sort of begrudgingly admitted that, yes, some of his movies were actually pretty good. And interestingly enough, when uh, the BBC came to interview him uh, for a Godzilla documentary in 1998, Mr. Fukuda was really surprised by the respect that this BBC crew uh, showed him. And uh, he, he, was, he was kind of touched by that. Uh, quote, I had hated watching or hearing about those two movies, he's talking about Gigan and Megalon, but later I realized that they really are popular among children. When I was interviewed by the BBC too, the staff told me how much they like them. I just don't get it. Recently I was watching a TV documentary on Godzilla, this was a, an NHK show called Gojira Umi no Wataru, uh, Godzilla Across the Sea. And there, were, there was my film in the U.S. video rental shops under the title Son of Godzilla. Kids over there apparently watch Godzilla on TV. At the time of The Mad Atlantic, uh, that was a Toshiro Mifune movie that uh, Fukuda directed in 1966, I was flying by myself from Madrid to Las Palmas, and an American father and his son, who was in elementary school, about the second grade, was sitting next to me. We were chatting, me with my few words of English, and in the course of talking, they asked, what movies have you directed? I thought that even if I listed a bunch of titles, they wouldn't know them, and it would be too much trouble, so I just said Godzilla. When I said that, the boy became extremely excited, and the father said, he's crazy about Godzilla. The boy reached into his bag and took out a bunch of Godzilla cards. Even today, I still get letters uh, from fans overseas. Godzilla's popularity is pretty amazing. And speaking of fan letters, I'd like to share one last personal anecdote. In March 1999, I had to call Mr. Fukuda about something. And when he came to the phone, he just sounded awful. He was struggling to speak, and he, was, uh, he just sounded terrible. And he explained that he was recovering, obviously not very well, from open-heart surgery. I later posted this news on the internet and offered to forward any get well cards that fans would care to send. And over the next week, I received a lot of cards for Mr. Fukuda. Uh, he was at this time uh, a widower, and I think he was really quite moved to discover that so many people thousands of miles away cared about him. He died less than two years uh, after that, but I think Toward the end of his life, he was kind of reconciled that his movies really did have some value.